Okay, so I looked it up. Being in the clart means you're being out in the dirt or the mud. Or you're just a dirty person. Apparently, that's what Google says. Anyways, I wanted some clarification on that, because I was like, what in the world is DD saying right now? <laughs> I have to play that game every time DD appears. Anyways, though, we had quite the, I would say, maybe more, maybe emotional last episode? Um just getting to understand little Mitra's feelings and how she didn't want to be a burden upon us and we kind of had to explain to her like hey no we, we love having you around and um really trying to help her feel that i mean she's pretty young so that that's a pretty hard concept for a kid to to imagine but i think we did a good job of, of kind of expressing our feelings and coming to a mutual understanding so overall it was a pretty good last episode i think so at least uh and we're gonna continue on and see what ends up happening here Mitru, little Mitru and I all had red eyes from crime, but Didi didn't touch on that subject at all. Wow. Okay, good job, Didi. Like I said, I've, I've seen a little bit of progression with Didi. She does have some moments where she doesn't um, just point out every little detail or say things she shouldn't. Perhaps she already knew what had happened without needing to ask. In gratitude for her consideration, Michiru and I cast appreciative smiles at her. Alright, why don't you get in the bath first, Michiru? I considered Mitru's suggestion imagining how it would play out. I had to chuckle at myself because I came to the decision so quick after imagining it. Yeah, let's get into it. Oh, they're actually doing it. Wow, okay. I think I think we're at a at a point with with Mitru where we know she's not gonna make every single advance on us possible. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. I'm glad that uh, she's kind of matured enough that we can, you know, do things like that that are kind of more um we're we're kind of bearing more. We're kind of uh in a more vulnerable situation, and then we can trust her not to, like, take advantage of that. Which is good. And I, I mean, that's kind of what I expected in her route. I expected her to... You know, not not necessarily make every single advance possible, but maybe to, like, mature a little bit and show a different side of her than we've usually been seeing. I feel like in the other routes, it's just her, like, trying to make comments about us <laughs> all the time. So it's been nice that she's been able to be a little bit more calm and low-key about it. Perhaps I would have hesitated more if little Mitra wasn't going to get into, or perhaps I didn't sense any malicious intent in the way that Mitra suggested it. Moreover, it seemed natural for all three of us to be together. After all, a family is supposed to be together. What was that? Huh? Huh? Why did they throw that in there at the end? Huh? You're, we're No explanation. We're just gonna get that. There was a little bit of a tick sound, if you guys heard that. Is that supposed to be like one of those time is running out things? Like it's almost fixed itself and, and we're getting close to the end. Like something's gonna happen and just kind of throw off this good vibe we got going on. I feel like that's what it's implying. Let's keep going though. It was hot and sleeping was a difficult task. It would normally feel unpleasant to wake up like this, but I felt surprisingly calm. Something felt soft and cold with a pleasant aroma. Feeling something rubbing against my cheek, I slowly cracked open my eyes. Ah, not again! Oh, no! Reacher's face was right in front of me. Guys, this is how you know someone is down bad. When they start saying, mm, even your sweat is starting to smell good. That That's just horny vibes, okay? Horny vibes. My body jerked up <laughs> out of the bed in surprise. Her words had surprised me as much as her face being right in front of me. I wouldn't usually let Mitra sniff me like a dog out of embarrassment. Mitra's fingers felt their way along my cheek up to the corner of my eye. Then her fingers slowly traced a path upwards uh, around my temple and forehead in order to confirm what expression I was making. She probably knew full well that she had. She was only asking to be certain. Nevertheless, I didn't respond. Perhaps because I didn't want Mitra to withdraw the slim white fingers that were caressing my lips. If 
I said anything, she would stop touching me. I couldn't tell if Mitra was intentionally touching me like that to seduce me. Hmm. I'd just woken up and Mitra must have known that all along. Mitra came closer touching me without even more of her body. I felt her skin pressing against me and the pulse emanating from within. Mitra's fingers drifted away from my lips, coming to rest on my cheeks instead. I'm, I'm gonna have to bonk you, Michiru. I'm gonna have to get out the, the hammer and bonk you for being horny. What's gonna happen if I don't respond right now? I was tempted by my curiosity, but right now I felt like I had to say something. I don't mind. I was lying, and that was also untrue. I was quite far from rejecting, if anything, I... Before I could say anything else, Mitra's lips were already drawing closer. With a hair's breath, she stopped as if to ab be absolutely certain. Mitra. So I finally decided to accept that the tension drained from my body. Then I pulled Mitra's body into my embrace. Are we going to get cock-blocked again here? Is, is little Mitru going to start busting the room? Oh, hi -o, good morning! You know, or, or maybe that's going to be Dee Dee. That's going to be Dee Dee doing that. Mitru trembled for just a moment, and then returning my embrace, she closed what distance remained between us. Oh, wow, they actually did it. Okay. We kissed at last. While well, Mitra had previously been quite aggressive and carnal with her advances, her kiss upon my lips was extraordinarily tender. From the way her lips trembled, I could easily tell she was overwhelmed with emotion. Okay, like I do in every single game, though. I skip over that. I don't want to hear those sounds. <laughs> I don't even care if it's a relationship I want. I don't want to hear the sounds, okay? It's just awkward watching and listening to that. Or lips touch, I could sense the slightest bit of innocence from her. Even that gentle meek kiss Mitra had given me was more than enough to make the extent of her affections known. I felt the emotions within me bubbling over. I didn't even know what to say. It isn't. We're awake now. I shook Mitra's hair as I responded. Even the intense thumping in my heart felt pleasant. A euphoric sensation flowed through my veins. So am I, this really is happiness. I love you too, Mitru. It's still weird hearing that, Nisama. In place of words which cannot be spoken, I convey my feelings through my actions. Grab my arm around her waist, pulling her closer to me. Alright, I was waiting for someone to interrupt. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew it was going to happen. It always does. I wish they would just let the moment happen. Like, like they would just do their thing and then just kind of break it off themselves. And then maybe someone can come in the room. It's like it, they're always interrupted in every single one of these. <laughs> You're already awake. Mitra and I quickly sat up and right next to us sulking was little Mitra. I don't know. I find kids to get up earlier than adults. That's for sure. Like, they, they they, need a certain amount of sleep. Like, they'll go to bed early, and then they'll get up early. But, like, they, they just, like, I don't know, freaking are wide awake in the morning. And, like, as soon as they get up, they're just, like, going and running around the house. I'm like, how do you do that? I, I don't have that kind of energy. How do you get up and then be able to run around the house? Not me. Little Mitra saw us kissing. The realization made, hit me with dizzying levels of embarrassment. <laughs> We're, we weren't doing anything weird, all right? I was frantically trying to <laughs> make an excuse for myself. But alas, there were no excuses to make. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> you home wreck her. <laughs> you can't home wreck with yourself. It's more than a little uncalled for. Why the hell does she have to be so competitive of a child and she kissed me on the cheek, not the lips, even? Well, 
Well, I see we're back to being dumb again. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, th this is all a little new to me, so... Even if it wasn't my fault, it was for the better that the guy take the fall in situations like this. Anyways, you two, it's hot, so give me more space. I don't lie, look, you're both sweating. I grabbed the towel and wiped the sweat off both of their necks. They're so dumb. They're just lying to us. It's not hot in here, just sweating to death. Like I said, stop making weird noises. I was just being polite. Also, little Mitra is right here, so keep it together. I scolded Mitra in a quiet voice, causing her to reluctantly nod her agreement. I told you it was hot. I guess that little towel wasn't enough. Mitra must have gotten hot and sweaty, too. She once told me that her chest got particularly sweaty on days like this. Naturally, she was utterly unsolicited. That was utterly unsolicited information. Okay. Alright, why don't we get in the bath? Yeah, I feel bad, because I wouldn't take a bath on a day like this. I would go take a shower. Take a nice cold shower. Yeah, I will. I'll go run the hot water while I'm at it. Or, why did I say hot? Why have I been doing this? I've been adding words that aren't there. I'll go run the water while I'm at it. Sorry, guys. Bear with me here. Bear with me. You know, English is my first and only language, and I don't even do that really well. After the three of us bathed together last time, having it become a routine thing was only natural. At this point, even without the pretense of playing house, I was starting to think of Lil Mitra more as a daughter than a little sister. I wonder if this is really um, what having a much younger little sister is really like. Mitra gave a slight bow and then turned to follow Lil Mitra out of the room. Now, just a minute. I told, I took Mitru by the hand before she could leave, pulling her into my embrace. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> She's enjoying it. And then I kissed her. Whoa. I know I said I didn't mind if you kissed me, but I actually made really happy that you did. I actually wanted to kiss you, of course. You just can't. You can't just kiss me whenever or wherever. I mean, that's pretty much what you just did, my guy. I felt bad about making Mitra so flushed, but it was still a bit embarrassing for me too, since I had turned her down so many times in the past. Even this morning, Mitra had come into my bed, bed of her own volition, so it's not like I forced her into anything. You're welcome. Crap, now I'm getting embarrassed. I saw a blush of color beginning to make itself known on Mitra's white skin. She wasn't just cute, she looked so seductive that I wanted to push her down the bit. Whoa, 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 my- when did this happen? When- when did it go from her making the advances to him wanting to make the advances? It was too adorable, and I was beside myself. I was beside myself, but uh, I better go and get that bath ready right away. Oh gosh, guys, we know where this is going. They're gonna have to end it soon, because it's gonna start going to H scenes, and we're... I already know they're not in the route, so that's the good thing. I quickly changed the subject to keep myself from doing something I'd regret. That was probably for the best, since Lil Mitra would come back and see us if it took too long. Alright, let's get going. We nodded to each other and started walking that direction, but we were still holding hands. Is this what happens when your parents aren't around? Is this what happens between siblings? You start growing too close? I think this shows the importance of having two parents in your house. I walked Mitru back to her room, which was all good and well, but she forced me to help her pick out an outfit, too. At that moment, I didn't feel like I could say no to her. Still, though, I didn't know Mitru had such mature-looking underwear I never would have suspected. I, I think we learned this in another route. We we kind of learned that Mitru has a, some interesting tastes. It might have been a Misaki's route. Just looking at them made my heart. So apparently there's boobs. I didn't know that. Apparently there's a slight bit of nudity in this. Um, even I don't even have any patches installed. This is just straight from Steam. But apparently they show some stuff. I am just unfortunately going to cut out that whole scene just because... I'm going to, okay? I'm just gonna cut it out. 
Um, I know some of y'all will, will not be happy about that. I'm just gonna cut it out because it's just kind of in the middle of the screen and, and the way I have my text. I know I can put it down there, but we're just gonna cut it out. I'm not gonna even bother censoring that. So, sorry about that. I apologize. Anyways, I follow Mitru's lead and close my own eyes as well. I really shouldn't be staring too much. Steady on, steady on. So, pretty much they just took a bath together and they were kind of talking. Uh, I didn't expect them to show that. I was like, wow. I don't even have a patch installed. And they're showing boobs. Definitely feels like summer. After we got out of the bath, we sat in the shade and enjoyed the gentle breeze. I had left the house almost every day recently, so it felt good to stay home and relax for once. Of course, it can be fun to go out sometimes, but at times like these, I couldn't help but think there's no place like home. Dang, this feels like summer. We're cutting our watermelons. I wonder if it's the, uh, the, the, the cube one, you know, where it's kind of like a... She didn't have to say that though. Didi is honest as ever. Says the girl who brought up plates for four people. I don't think that's Didi's first time bringing like more than um than just for the people she's serving. She always kind of intends to be included because she always brings up just enough for everybody. Which is fine. I feel like Dee Dee, you know, if she's preparing it, I feel like there's no reason for her not to be a part of it, right? The virtues of a Japanese person are tactfulness, humility, and formality, after all. You're not even Japanese, though. Well, whatever. We had a good ambiance going here, so I was, wasn't about to get hung up on a little detail like that. The four of us sat on the porch, eating watermelon and enjoying each other's company. We listened to the chirping of insects and the twinkling of the wind chimes. This place was definitely isolated from the hustle and bustle of the outside world. Sorry, we're not in Kyoto. We definitely can't do that today, though. I feel like that would be quite the trip. <laughs> I mean, can you go from one end to J of Japan to the other in a day? I... I'd be skeptical. I feel like it would take you quite a while. Aren't you supposed to say you're interested in the temple or shrine that sells them? While Michiru equipped wirely at DD, I just laid back and enjoyed the mellow atmosphere. Michiru and little Michiru got along just like sisters and DD naturally fit in with them as well. They say three is a crowd, but I wasn't getting that impression from them at all, though I did feel a bit out of place myself. Mitra had told me that she didn't have much time to talk with me as before. I wonder if this is how she felt. Bro, how long have you been watching? <laughs> hmm, that's a suspicious time to watch. There was some some things going on in the map. You nosy little peeping Tom. You got some nerves saying that kind of stuff to my face, you know? Oh, I have no doubt that he did. Well, she was right about that. I don't feel like that's very, um... Uh... What, what's the word? There's not a lot of equality going on here, huh? How come one is worse than the other, huh? That's right, is that right? Yeah, I feel like there may might be some truth to that, but it's still wrong. It doesn't matter who, who it is. It's still wrong. Getting too used to modern society. And where'd you hear that from anyways? <laughs> ah, see, that's where you went wrong. Don't go on the internet for advice. So you're the culprit. Well, 
For the love of God, don't say it. Don't worry about it, little Mitru. They just went through my browsing history. Oh, Mitru, thank you. I don't know. I don't feel like Ray's the best looking guy. Does anybody agree with me on that? Like, I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying he's not the best looking guy out there. Like, he's he's okay. I appreciate the compliments, but getting all this dumped on me at once is making me blush. Just when I was starting to cool down again, here I was starting to burn up again. Knock it off, this is too embarrassing. Crow laughed gleefully too. I want to get the hell out of here right now. That's right, when all else fails, be kind, rewind. If so, I would have done if the pocket watch weren't still broken. Well, even if it was embarrassing, it wasn't so bad I really needed to use the watch, still, it wasn't a big deal. Let's say the watch before returning to my pocket. I know said it repaired itself quite a bit more from the last time that I looked at it. Good, good. It wouldn't take that long for it to fix itself. Yeah, it was a good thing. It had to be a good thing. Hmm, what do you mean? Of course, what about you, Mitru? As long as it's not a movie from like the 60s about the Yakuza. I like how DD just has to work. <laughs> I don't even think she's getting paid, she just works. But you can come sit down and watch a movie. While she stood up at the same time as us, I had a strange feeling about that comment. She seemed to be weirdly considerate of us. It's a weekend for you too, DD. Do you really need to work all day? <laughs> oh, that's what you mean by work. Okay. <laughs> Dee Dee is just like, I'm just gonna binge all the anime today. I've had days like that. I've had days where I've done something similar. I just can't watch it for that long because then my brain just fries, you know? I, I, I like to really like sit down and delve into what I'm watching. Uh, unless I'm watching just something funny, you know, then you can just kind of turn off your brain. But... DD clearly had plans to enjoy her day off, too, albeit in a different way from us. She's enjoying it in the the way that probably most of my viewers do, I would imagine. I feel like you guys probably watch a lot of anime, manga, visual novels, you know? I feel like that's that's the kind of person who'd be watching someone play visual novels on YouTube. At least that's what I would be doing. Um, but you know, I have I have other responsibilities. I wish I could do that all day. Turning to my room, little Mitru quickly ran over to get the DVD. Lately, Lil Mitra had been insisting that she could do things like this herself, so we just watched over her instead. Whenever the three of us sat together, the girls would sit on either side of me. Sometimes we'd have Lil Mitra sit in the middle, too. <laughs> Lil Mitra trotted over, walking past and sitting on the other side of me. Guess that made me stuck in the middle with them today. Kaboom. Or so I thought. Surprisingly enough, she sat in my lap instead. It was surprising, but mostly I was just worried about me what Mitru would say. I expected her to protest and try to sit on my lap as well. Uh, well, are you okay with this, Mitru? Okay, in that case, let's get started. Once she saw that Mitru wasn't going to yell at her, little Mitru leaned back against my chest with a gleeful little giggle. Then she pulled my arm down around her waist like someone pulling down the safety bar on a roller coaster. <laughs> just... <laughs> Mitru certainly knew what Lil Mitru was doing, uh, even if she couldn't see it happening. Perhaps the reason she didn't stop Lil Mitru was they had finally become a family. If that were the case, I was happy to see it too. Something tells me that's not the case, but sure, we'll go with that. Hmm, that was fun. Once the movie had ended, I voiced my honest opinion of it out loud. It had a rather simple storyline like that of a children's book, but underneath the simple facade was a surprisingly profound moral lesson. Aside from the entertainment value, the movie also taught children a good lesson. I like movies that do that, or just TV shows in general. I like the ones that, like, kind of appeal to children, but also appeal to adults, too, with, like, deeper meanings. Um, whether that's, like, kind of adult themes, or if that's just, like, there's, there's more to it that a child wouldn't get. 
Uh, I think a good example of that would probably be Gravity Falls. I think Gravity Falls is a, is a really good show that appeals to both ages. Because, like, my wife and I watched it through, and we're, like, in our 20s. And I thought it was really freaking good. I really loved Gravity Falls. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> when I when I hear something or, or see something, I'm like, wow, this is not a children's show. <laughs> Even though it's definitely made for kids. I'm like, wow, there's some really, like, grown-up or adult stuff in here. But uh, I think that would be probably the first thing that comes to mind as far as something that would appeal to both ages. I like stuff like that, though. I like when you can watch something and um, everyone gets something out of it, right? I think a lot of shows do that now. That's pretty good. I think Bluey is another one. If you guys have ever heard of Bluey, um, great show. And I think it's something that's fun to watch with younger kids, but also it's fun for the adults because you're like, wow, that's, that's adult humor. Anyways... Aside from the entertainment value of the movie, also taught children a good lesson. It was the kind of movie that could be enjoyed by parents and children alike, and it gave the whole family something to talk about, too. It was really wonderful. They definitely were pretty memorable songs. If I heard Mishu humming a childish song like that, it would definitely put a smile on my face. Though she'd probably get weird looks from her classmates if she did that at school, and she's not very keen on drawing attention to herself. <laughs> Little Mitra snapped me out of my revere by pulling on my shirt. Hmm. Oh, it must be beautiful. I still remember the awe-inspiring sight of the sunset on the beach, but even watching it from the window was beautiful, too. <laughs> that sounds good. Now that it's cooled down outside, there's probably a nice breeze going. What about you, Lil Mitra? Do you want to go on a walk? That's like the best time to go on a walk to is like at night or like pretty kind of early in the morning. I'd say around like 7 a.m. I feel like that's pretty good because it's like the sun's just kind of coming up. It, it's still pretty cool out. So you might just put on like a light jacket or something, depending on what time of year it is. I mean, if it's winter, you're going to have to put on a heavy jacket, but it's a good time. I was about to tell Lil Mitra to get off me. She put her arms around my neck. She was clearly asking me to pick her up. <sighs> no, I hate every time that she asks this because you know what's going to happen. Mitra is going to get jealous. You want me to carry you? You're a spoiled one. Well, if it's okay for a young girl to act childish every once in a while. I feel like this is just because she would rather be picked up. What did I say? It's so predictable. I know it. Let's just walk hand in hand this time. Alright, quit pouting both of you. Let's just freaking go on the walk. <laughs> Gosh, it's like dealing with two of the same person is such a handful. The two Mitrus were arguing again and again, but this wasn't seriously fighting. I couldn't understand why Mitru thought that it was okay for the little Mitru. Little girl to sit my lap, but not to ride on my back. Was it because her chest would be pressed against my back breast? Y'all make some weird comments. <laughs> Besides, Mitra, you're wearing a skirt today, or would you rather give everyone around us a good show? Okay. I had to wonder what kind of preparations could possibly be required for a walk, but hey, girls, am I right? <laughs> but, uh... Little Mitra cheerfully dashed out of the room, and Mitra followed her at a leisurely pace. Watching the two of them leave reminded me of how similar they were, despite their obvious differences on the surface. They were definitely similar in the way that they acted calm and collected, despite actually being quite careless. What even is this first part of your... What is this first word? Can... Can... I don't even know what you said! You, you said moshi mosh, like as if you were talking on the phone and you're like, moshi mosh. <sighs> just wanted to, uh, she just went to her room. Yeah, you do have bad timing. That's an understatement. You literally appeared the very second she left. She definitely did, not that it mattered. Did you need to talk to little Mitra about something? The three of us are about to go on a walk. Are you worried about making it too spicy? 
Very, huh? Sounds good to me. Come to think of it, I could smell it in the air. Does that mean it was already nearly done? I get it. She wanted to know if she should make a little Demetrius portion milder or if she should make it more in line with my Demetrius palettes. Mm, you can just give us all the mild stuff. Um, I have a confession to make. I'm not a, and I've said this before, but I'm not a huge fan of Japanese curry. Uh, I just, I'm just not. I actually think I probably would prefer Indian curry. There's some pretty good Indian curries out there. Um, as far as spiciness goes, I like it to have some heat, but like I can't, I can't do too much because it will just burn my mouth. Um, usually when I go for salsa, I go for mild. I, I, I do like a little bit of heat in there. Um, sometimes I will get a mi or, or a medium. Um, but e each brand is different. So like some some of them, the mild is hot, and then some of them like the hot is like just barely hot. So it's really strange. Um, I, I usually would go for a mild or a medium, though. Uh, just because it, it doesn't do well with my stomach. Like, going in, like, it's fine. It's too much detail. We're going to end it there. I do, but I won't mind either way. Hey, I never said you could call me that. We're slowly becoming more mature, because we're becoming more like a dad. Well, I kept carrying on with Didi. The thought occurred to me that I wasn't watching over little Mitru. Maybe the blonde-haired maid uh, needed adult supervision more than little Mitru did. Things were definitely easier around the house compared to when it was just me and Mitru, though. Well, I'm having fun, so I guess I can't complain. It really was fun. This really was happiness. I'm glad Bray's enjoying himself, though. I mean, with all that's going on, he seems to be having a pretty good time. I'll say, are they just skipping over the walk and the lunch? I guess we're just going straight to the next day. Ooh, we're going into summer break. Okay, okay. Um, We're not really, like, as far into this video as I'd like to be. Mainly because I had to cut out all that, that bath scene, which I feel bad about. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I looked over it and I'm like, mm, still don't want to really want to read this. <laughs> so I just cut it out. Closing zero from school year concluded without incident thrusting us into a very much awaited summer break. All of the newly freed students filled the school with a jovial atmosphere. Dee Dee and I ended up turning down invitations to hang out with friends so we could walk home with Mitru instead. We're home. I wonder how close to the end we are. I feel like we're pretty darn close. But I don't know. We could be still a ways. Ray, what are you doing? No, don't do that. But let's not take off over. <laughs> covered in sweat just from walking through the heat outside. Mitru and Didi were grumbling about it too. They wanted to change right away. They need to take a bath together with me again too. Okay. She's whispering to us. That was kind of cute. As I was thinking about that, I noticed little Mitru peeking out from the corner to look at me. Little Mitru, what are you doing over there? She looked around to make sure that no one was around Then she quietly snuck over to where I was standing. She was too cute. I could tell that she wanted to talk about something in secret. Where? My room? Lomitru pulled on my hand without answering my question. For a second I thought she looked like a little dog that wanted to go on a walk, but that was kind of rude to her. Alright, Lomitru, what is it? Yeah, I don't have any plans in particular. Her anxious face lit up with a smile when I nodded in an affirmation. Suppose we didn't end up going last time. Of course we can. Little Mitru wore a jubilant smile and waved her hands in the air. Her childishness was adorable. Little Mitru had become a lot more willing to tell us what she wanted so she couldn't go any anywhere alone in our world. This must have been her growing up too. Yeah, it was a heartwarming sight for sure. Let's get ready then. Did you ask Mitru? Oh really? I had heard I had heard of keeping secrets from a girl's father, but I was surprised that little Mitru wanted to keep a secret from her mother, Mick's sister. Even if she called it a secret, it sounded more like she just wanted to leave Mitru out. <laughs> I mean, I don't really blame her, do you guys? I mean, Mitru... I don't know, Mitru is pretty... clingy, I think is the word that I would use. Um, so it makes sense that she wants some time alone. Why do you want to keep a secret from Mitru? Oh, 
からね一回見に行ってみたいなって That's nice of her I get it, you want to surprise her You're such a good girl, little Mitsu I put my hand on her head and combed through her hair to show my appreciation for her. I suppose I ought to get Lumitru a present too, but she'd probably love it even more if it was a surprise. Mitru would be happy to see Lumitru happy and vice versa. Lumitru, are you ready to go yet? Oh, I'll handle the explanation to Mitru then. Alright, then mission start. Ah, frick, we got caught. Mission failed. We'll get it next time. We went through the garden to avoid Mitsuru, but when she came out the back door at the worst possible time. Oh, I'm just for a second. Uh, no, just us two. No, you can't come. Sorry. <laughs> will be true. It's good that you're honest, but you're gonna spoil everything. We're not gonna buy anything expensive, alright? We're just going for a walk. It's not like we're going to a restaurant or anything. <laughs> it just seemed like she still hadn't caught on to us yet, but I couldn't tell if she was just playing dumb. Will be true. Reached a sigh of relief, believing we tricked me true, but I still wasn't sure that we had pulled the wool over her eyes. <laughs> Ah, I know. I'll be careful too, though. I was relieved to see Mitsuru nod. Looks like she fell for it. I'm sure you will. Uh, I told you already. Little Mitsuru is coming with me. Mitra just smiled with amusement, ignoring little Mitra's dissatisfied glares. I guess we're safe as long as she doesn't understand what we're up to, though it might be a problem later on. Uh, that's not it either. <laughs> Is she coming with us too? Mitra waved us off amusedly as we left. Okay, good. She's not coming. I wonder if we fooled her. Well, at least she wasn't suspicious. It seems like she's just gonna watch the house. It's not like she'd be able to tail us around or anything. Yeah, I suppose we ought to get her something nice before we go back home. Little Mitru knew how lonely it could be to stay at home. Maybe she... Yep, she's a good girl. Uh, I'm not really sure. I know there aren't uh, many things she dislikes, at least. Mitru always said her favorite thing was simply spending time enjoying the pleasure of my company, so I didn't know what kind of present to get her. Yeah, that definitely sounds like something Mitra would say. She would just be like, oh, I just want my big brother. She wasn't especially fussy about what kind of food she liked or disliked either. Well, I know she enjoys listening to Rakugo. Uh, there's stories on audio CDs. You might be a bit too young for those. Mitra started listening to them because they were something she could enjoy after losing her sight, yet little Mitra still had her own sight. I'd prefer to buy her something that little Mitra would enjoy too. In any case, it would be best if we didn't return from the field of flowers empty-handed. If it's from you, I'm sure she'd be happy to accept any kind of present you give her. Uh, I guess so. We walked side by side with smiles on our faces discussing the problem. I took small steps to match her pace since I was holding her hand. I like before we walked along the well-ordered streets. We walked and walked, and then we finally reached our destination. <gasps> Little Mitra, in awe of the sight before her eyes, let out a gasp of amazement. Even I was taken aback by the sight, in spite of how I'd already seen it several times before. The scenery alone was not incredible in itself. The clear summer air and sweet scent of the flowers completed the package. Little Mitra was even more amazed than Mitra and I were when we came home. <laughs> Wasn't that your plan all along? I see, point taken. My feelings of appreciation and gratitude towards Mitra were so great that no matter how many gifts I gave, I could never adequately express them to her. Little Mitra clearly felt grateful to Mitra too, since she wanted so badly for her to be happy about the birthday present. She didn't even care about the surprise part. 
Although we might still be able to surprise Michi later on if she ends up thinking this is the only present we're going to get for her. Yeah, I'm sure she'll like it. She might even cry. I mean, she might cry from happiness. I certainly don't want her to be sad either. When little Michiru imagined that, she showed me a big smile that reminded me of a flower blooming. Little Michiru's beautiful smile was even more dazzling than the field of flowers in front of me. Alright, let's do this. I was excited to see how happy Michiru would be too. Although I didn't have to, I did have to worry a little bit that she might try to push me down and take my clothes right out of the way when she received the gift. It's very sad that you have to, to worry about that, but... I'm, I'm just waiting for the moment that they just... Something happens between them and they can stop doing that. I think once they, they start doing that kind of stuff, then they'll like stop doing that in public. <laughs> need to think about where, how we're going to give her this gift, though. That'd be okay, but maybe we could try making some kind of bouquet of, or a flower crown, too. Yeah, I think putting a little bit more effort into it rather than just going picking a few flowers and then giving it to her, you know? Fresh to pick flowers would smell the best, but pressed flowers make good presents, too. Looks have different ways of preparing flowers since I wanted to take, make Mitru happy. I'd only hesitate because I'd already given Mitru most of the gifts I thought she would like in times gone by. Then we can make one from a pressed flower. Go look for the prettiest flower you can find. We'll use that to make the bookmark. We can grab a few extra ones for decoration, too. The appearance wouldn't actually matter to Mitru, though. Nevertheless, Mitru would definitely appreciate knowing that little Mitru picked out a pretty flower for her. Little Mitru started searching through the flowers for the best candidate. She wanted to do her best to make Mitru happy. Seeing her go to this much effort made me want to give little Mitru a gift, too. I'd given her a stuffed animal before so she wouldn't feel lonely at home, but today I wanted to give her another gift to make her happy. I made two flower crowns, one for Mitru and little Mitru. After little Mitru gave her a present to Mitru, I would give her her own present to both of them. Uh, I knew little Mitru would like this kind of present, even if she wasn't expecting it. Just imagining a smile on her face gave me a resolve to keep working away. Oh, but I wonder, what should I get little Mitra on her birthday? Honestly, I've been buying little Mitra a lot of presents. If I spoil her too much, then Mitra might get mad at me. Yeah, that's the kind of parent I am. Like, I see how much stuff my daughter has already, and she's not even two years old. I'm like, gosh dang, Like, I don't want to spoil her. I just... I don't feel like spoiling a child really makes them happier. So it's like, why, why bother? Why do that? I think it's good to get them presents, but in moderation. Like, I, I kind of heard about some parents that, like, do, like, three three Christmas gifts. Um, they do one from, like, Santa. They do one from uh, parents. And then just... I don't remember what the other one was. If, if it was from, like, other people. I don't know. But my daughter has two grandmas who just love to absolutely spoil her. And I'm just like, oh no, guys, stop. You're ruining my plan. I'm trying not to, to spoil her and just fl flood her with gifts. Because growing up, I liked um, I liked really like focusing on the toys I already had and things like that. I really I really liked playing with them over and over. I didn't I didn't need new ones. So when I did get new ones, it was like a special thing. I don't want to just flood my child with things so that it, I don't know. It just makes it less special to me. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but as a parent, that's kind of how I feel. <sighs> Probably be best to ask Lomitra herself. I wouldn't be trying to surprise Lomitra with her birthday present, and it would... I wouldn't be trying to surprise Lomitra with her birthday present, and it would not would be more important to make sure that her birthday was one to remember. But right now, I need to finish uh, these before we go home. I wonder if she's going to like start disappearing on her birthday or something, and they're going to do something, uh, and then she's going to end up staying and not not leaving. I have a feeling it's going to go down like that somehow. Very um, reminiscent of a another visual novel. I had finished Mitru's flower crown by now, and I was still working on little Mitru's. Hers would be smaller, but hmm, where did little Mitru go? <sighs> My guy, we had one job, and it was to not lose little Mitru. We've already messed it up. She must have run off somewhere, just like any child with energy would do. Perhaps I might, might have lost track of Mitra the exact same way when we came here. 
Oh, thank goodness. I was like, oh no, we can't have two times we lose her in like, what, two episodes? She were right there, little Michiru. No, no, it's nothing. I was just wondering where you were. As I said that, I hid the half-completed crown of flowers behind my back. Then I noticed what little Mitra had in her hand. Is that bouquet of flowers something you made? Of course it's beautiful. You got a good eye for flowers, little Mitru. I was already thinking about decorating Mitra's room with that bouquet once we'd given it to her. I also knew of a few ways to preserve flowers so they wouldn't wilt or dry out. I'm so bad. Like, I'll, I'll sometimes give my wife flowers, which is rare, and I probably should do it more. But I'm very bad about keeping them alive. I don't... I just generally forget about them. I know that's bad. I'm a bad husband. <laughs> it's a good choice. We'll just tuck it away in this book for now. I brought a... Oh gosh, I have to try to pronounce this. Kojian? I, I, I know the accent's not there, so I know that's not how you say it. Uh, Kojian Dictionary along, and I was glad glad I'd done that. I figured it would come in handy even if we came to the flower field. After all, I'd given Mitra a similar gift sometime in the past. I had the idea of giving a pressed flower as a gift even before we came here, so little Mitra coming up with the same idea was pure serendipity. It was a cute, cute time being able to spend with her in the, in the flower field there. Having prepared the bookmark of the bouquet, little Mitra and I walked through the field of flowers. She was having so much fun, this place was giving me a pleasant feeling of nostalgia as well. Unfortunately, we were having so much fun that I lost track of time for a little while. I didn't manage to finish little Mitra's crown of flowers, so I decided to finish it once we got home. I don't think she'll be, uh, she'll get mad at you, but she might be a little bit peeved at me for staying out for so long. I would be able to make it up to her with the gifts, hopefully. That's right, just don't tell her about this until I finish it. I'd already pressed the flower, so I just needed to make it into a bookmark once I got home. I also figured I could use that time to finish the crowns as well. Maybe I could give both of them the crowns after dinner time. I think I'd just make her angrier if we shut ourselves in there again. I was already doubtful enough of my ability to keep it a secret from Mishra to start with. That's right. Oh, you should also think about what you want for your birthday too, little Mitru. Hmm, it's really soon, isn't it? Okay, so I wondered about this earlier. Okay, okay. They don't share the same birthday is what they're implying. I don't know why the slot came into my head. I was wondering if maybe their birthdays were different. Uh, and why would their birthdays be different if they're the same person? Hmm, interesting. Like I said, I think a lot of this is is little Mitru's here to be the daughter that they won't probably have naturally, for many reasons. So, I think it would be fine if she doesn't share the same birthday, if she's technically a different person. Because that also means, if, if we really read into this, and I'm probably getting ahead of where the game wants me to be, if she technically has a different birthday, she's technically a different person, then maybe she won't ever go blind. So that kind of solves my previous dilemma where I had that episode where I was kind of going back and forth between Mitra's opinion and mine about whether they should tell her that Mitra's blind. I still agree with my initial statement. I still think they should tell her. But this probably means that she won't end up being blind. There's a lot of different circumstances here. I'd imagine that it wouldn't lead down the same path. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. I just want to give you some of my thoughts real quick why I had them. Little Mitra shook her head in response to my question. I've done quite confused. She wore this sort of expression that seemed to be wondering why on earth I would be thinking such a thing. Huh? A click, like something of that shifting, fell on my ears. A click, like that of something moving, fell on my ears. A click, like something of that settling, fell on my ears. No, it, it's nothing. In the midst of my own confusion, that was the only thing I could say. It, it, it's nothing at all. Repeating that mis to myself a few times, I finally unfroze from where I stood. Mitra and little Mitra didn't have the same birthday? Bro had told me that even though they were the same person, there's no guarantee that they could be entirely identical. Could they have a different, really have different birthdays? Their outward appearances, names, and knowledge were ostensibly identical after all. No, when it came to their knowledge, I never had stopped to verify that they were 
and it really was identical between them. Since little Michiru thought of our house as her own, and also the same memory getting lost in the park, I've been totally convinced by that. And I think he's right to just assume that everything was the same. But this is, a, this is another little plot twist, huh? So it's not completely identical. Was little Michiru lying to us? Was it really that case that would make this child... How about we go home now, little Michiru? Hand in hand, we slowly walked towards home. At this moment, the question of who Lomitru really was didn't matter anymore. Even if she was different from Mitru in some ways, even if she was a completely different person, that wouldn't change the memories we made in our time uh, spent with her. The memories and the feelings she had, even if they were identical to Mitru's own, that wasn't why we were raising her. And besides, if Lomitru and Mitru weren't really the same person, then there was little room for doubt as to who she could actually be. I could feel the warmth of her tiny little hand in my own. Little Mitru was here with me right now. For that, for now, that was enough. Okay, that's that's quite the twist. I think that's going to play into the ending of the story here a little bit, for sure. All right. Okay, I'm I'm going to end the video here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, save your save your groans. I know. I'm going to end it here because I have a feeling we're kind of leading up into kind of a climax right now. Like there's going to be some kind of big event that happens. And I want to save that for the next video so we can make sure we cover that. I have no idea how close I am to the ending. We could be coming up on that pretty soon. Maybe in the next episode. I have no idea. Um, but I think I'm going to cut it off there. I think that was kind of a little bit of drama that's going to happen here. And I want to make sure I have time for that. So I appreciate you guys. Um, definitely looking forward to finding out what's going on with Lil Mitra having a different birthday. That's not something I expected to happen. Um, I had some theories, but that was not one of them. Um, I still believe in some of my other theories. I, I still think she's going to end up staying. Um, she's not going to return to her own time or anything like that. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. But we'll we'll see what ends up happening next episode. I think it's going to be a good one. So I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.